Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Lunchtime Learning. I'm delighted to be joined by Steve Green today, Director of Simply Green in Newton Abbott in sunny Devon. I'm sure it's sunny everywhere today, actually. Maybe a, little, maybe a little bit cold and I know you've got a cold as well. So cold on the outside, cold on the inside. I wish you better. So okay. thanks very much. Thanks very much for joining me today, Steve. No, so tell morning. us a bit about yourself. How did you fall or become an estate agent? I, I did fall into it um uh, a long time ago 1999 i fell into a state agency so i was 20 i'm i'm just turned 45 now but uh i fell into it purely because i i failed at arts college okay um, my father was a uh, a state agent for a very long time and i had a conversation with him and and it wasn't something i ever wanted to do i grew up with a state agency as a child and uh, he said give it 6 months and 25 years later I'm I'm in it still. <laughs> so tell us, where did you start then? Uh, I started from my father's firm as the uh, the tea boy and photocopier boy in, in Newton Abbott, and uh, that was '99. So by 2004, I was running a branch for him in Bobby Tracy, which is a what's known as Gateway to the Moor, Gateway to Dartmoor. It's a little small town. Um, ran that until sort of 2008 and then unfortunately the um, the business went to liquidation due to the credit crunch so um i moved on to pastures new and, and worked for a, a fresh new estate agency which woke, um, opened up in may 2009 uh, and ran that with a guy um until 2014 worked for another independent for seven years and started simply green in, in 21. okay so can i unpick all of that please yes <laughs> okay so, so starting off um working for your dad working with family um how did you find that and how were you treated from going from a tea boy photocopying boy to actually um running a branch it was tough it was it was very separated from family and business which is what i wanted you know i, I never called him dad at work and he was always known as, as nigel at work um it i think he was harder on me definitely I think um, I posted recently on a LinkedIn post. I think um, James, one of these agents in Yorkshire, posted about his son joining, and and it's it is tough because sometimes it does cross over. Um, but I enjoyed it. I, I did enjoyed it more than I thought I ever would, um, and I worked my way from the bottom because that's where I wanted to start because of other staff members and the the father son owner son kind of scenario and. Um, I worked my way up and and he said look you know i can't remember how old i was what was i 25 yeah 25 you're ready to go and run bobby tracy um i think it's an ideal office it's a small town um you're quite you know you're very hands-on you're very personable you wear your heart on your sleeve and that town probably needs someone like that um, and it'll be a good training office before you move back say to new naba or, or into the Torquay branch um but yeah, there was times when it crossed over into personal, definitely. But uh, he was he was always fair. Okay. So um, what lessons did you learn from your dad and that you've brought into your business? Oh, he was a grafter, like a massive grafter. Um, he was out the door at 7 a.m. Um, he'd get back at 9 p.m. Um, he would eat a microwave roast dinner that my mother had made and he'd be back in his study working until midnight. Like he lived and breathed it. He started in a state agency at 17 um, and, and was in a state agency until 61. So he was the youngest managing director for Man & Co under Harry Hill wow. when, he was, when he was 32. Um, when we lived up in um, the southeast, I was born in Wokenham and he was running branches in Wokenham and Sindelsham. Um, and we moved all around the country. You know, I had eight different schools as a child. Wow. So, so but yeah he was he was hard working really hard working and that's what i learned from him um so yeah yeah good good agent good um and then what was it like going from um well actually to run and look after a, a small team there how did you cope with that what lessons did you learn from that um to always listen to them um to get them to sort of buy into the ideas and you know, I was really fortunate. I, I had a 19-year-old negotiator approach me when I was in Bobby Tracy. And and to be honest, at that time, I was it was hard. I was a 25-year-old young man with uh, a 
uh, Dave, David Beckham sort of 2005 haircut in a in a moorland town that were used to the country gent in the tweed jacket. So it was it was a tough gig to run that office. And when a 19 year old approached me, I was probably thinking to myself that probably wasn't the right idea. But this this young girl blew me away in an interview. Um, and I asked my father to interview her alongside me in the second interview. And she controlled the whole interview. And me and her had a really special bond that's, that's still there now. She was working with me at Simply Green. So we've known each other a long time and she blew me away. And the two of us really did well in that town. And then we employed a, a local girl in the town, sort of had that community kind of connection there and a part timer. And it worked really well. It worked really well um, until I, I left in 2008 to run the Torquay branch. Okay, so, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Went into liquidation. Um, yeah. Lessons from that. Um, grew too quick. Grew too quick. I think you know, if my father was here now, he would agree with that. We opened up seven offices in the space of you know a few years, and Lettings was supporting the the sales business at that time. But unfortunately, it was, there were 70 members of staff for that company. So, yeah, 9th of February 2009, the administrators walked in and and that was it. An hour later, I was uh, I was sat in a, in a pub thinking, what am I going to do after 10 years with a company? Uh, and particularly with my surname and, you know, my connections and, and all the rest of it, am I going to stay in a state agency at that time? So it was, yeah, there's too many outgoings. It, was, it grew too quick, definitely. And with that comes a, a big fall. Okay, so how did you deal with that? How did you cope? Um, it was it was hard because I I was worried that nobody would employ me because of my surname, not not my reputation. It was the first and foremost thing was who's going to take me when my father's just lost a business. Um, and I applied for thirty different jobs. Four of them were estate agents' jobs, uh, and the others weren't. The only people that actually came back to me were the four estate agents, a large corporate in Exeter um remax was one which was kind of just coming up and coming um and your move and i went for a, a company in newton abbott that were, were direct, one of them was a director of Connells. so he had his solid corporate side and i had my independent side uh, and we worked really well you know i um i got offered jobs with fulfers and your move but i decided to stay in teambridge because i knew teambridge which is our, our borough and 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 they knew me and, and I had a point to prove. So um, I took a, a huge hit on my wage from what I was on. I, I halved my wage in the matter of two months from being a branch manager to kind of running it alongside the owner. But it was the best thing to do it. So I could come out of a, a big shadow and make my own name in, in 2009. Okay. So from there, you then went, you went there. Um how did you find that going from running a branch manager to or being a branch manager to working aside someone? What did you learn from that and the change? I, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. You know, at the end of the day, I think what pushed me on was that I had something to prove. And I was always the son in, in the previous business. Um, so to work alongside someone that I knew but um, hadn't worked with was really exciting, and particularly from a cold start as well. Um, and it took off. Like there was green shoots appearing in the first stages of 2009 it was a short period of, of bad news and we really hit the ground running it was exciting we bounced off each other um tim my, my boss at that time had you know loads of ideas and i had ideas and we listened to each other and and we grew it and it was it was really really it was a great place to work it really was okay so i suppose we're in a, a more challenging market than it was in co than i was at covid so again, you know, how did you manage to grow it then? And I'm really interested because obviously you opened in COVID. Um, yeah. So that's an interesting decision. What made you decide to do that? Uh, time away from where I was working. I think in in every industry, uh, a lot of people were furloughed and a lot of people had time to think where they were going. Um, I think we all got probably stuck in a rut so to speak that we were just working and having that time away homeschooling the children was the hardest job in the world at that time you know they were what were they 10 and 7 so uh, that was really tough but it did give me time to think about things and and certain things happened for the company I was working for at that time and 
I never ever wanted to run my own business. It was not something I wanted to do because I grew up with it. I um I experienced the kind of childhood where my father wasn't around, and that was a worry, particularly having two young daughters. Um, everybody had always said, "Why don't you go out on your own? You'd, you'd be really good, and you'd be success, and all the rest of it." But it also wasn't the right time five, six years ago. Um, so COVID and furlough created it. And uh, me and the wife sat down one night in the lounge and with a bit of pen and paper and pencil. And she came up with the name. I can't take credit for the name. Um, and yeah, we, it, we just went for it. You know, with um, one of my best friends, who's my kind of silent business partner. He was the one that planted the seed in my head in the March of 2020. Uh, and said, look, you, you need to get out and do your thing. You know, you are, you're grinding yourself into the ground and you need to have more belief than what you give yourself. So, um, yeah, it went from there, really. Okay, that's really interesting. So how come he had more belief than you? And how, and how have you changed that belief? Um, it, it, I don't know. He's, he just, he is... He's a guy that's always there for everybody. He sees something in everybody. And I've, I've found this over the years that I've known him. Um, and he just he just said, look, you know, look what you've achieved in the last sort of 10, 15 years particularly. And you really could make this work. As long as you keep to the ethos of you being you and, and, and hands-on and personable and all these cliche things, it will work. And um, and it did. You know, we, we started up. I'm really good friends with a, a local funeral director. And um, he, I'd spoken to him about it in private, and he said, "What are you going to do? What's it going to be? Is it going to be a hybrid? Is it going to be kind of like you know, an online thing?" And I said, I, "I don't really know." And he said, "What do you want it to be?" And I said, "I don't want to be working from the fourth bedroom, which is where I'm sat now, um, and because I want to have that separation. I think I need it." And he had a big old building that he was gradually moving into, and upstairs was a, a twenty by fifteen foot room, and he said, "Have it. Start it in there." Um, and see what happens. And, and that was an absolute godsend having that room because it started in the time when we could get back into normal times after COVID, but I didn't have those huge overheads either. And I could grow it organically with no real pressure. So Lucy, my negotiator, um, who I met at Bob Tracy, the 19 year old I told you about, she worked with me at the firm I left. I approached her about it and she was extremely keen. And she came with me and we um, we worked in this 15 by 20 room and grew it gradually but from day one we had two listings you know from two mums at a local school um and those sold by the end of the week um we were listing i think something like 10 12 in the first four weeks of trading from a cold start i remember her saying to me when we walked in the first day 6th of april 21 she said we are you nervous i said yeah i said the drive which is only two miles from my house to here has been extremely worrying because how do we make that phone ring how do we get it ringing how are we going to get applicants how are we going to get valuations i haven't called it steve green estate agents and i, I never was going to but there's a play on the words that the sg is my initials the simply green can lead to anything and i think it, it will it will get in the public domain really quickly but social media was the huge the huge thing for us we did little teaser campaigns you thought we were gone we haven't been gone for long keep your eyes peeled me and lucy stood up on top of the hate or rock on dartmoor the drone coming towards us we're back and we just drip fed that for a period of about three weeks and then i had lots of messages what are you up to you're starting up on your own it's about time we all said you could do it and it, it just took off, Stephen. It just went absolutely bonkers. Brilliant. Absolutely love it. Great story. And what I love is you've shown your vulnerability, mm. um, you know, your true feelings. Um, and it's great to hear because I'm sure there's a lot of people like, should I set up? Should I not set up by myself? It's a big, big, big deal. So so thank you for sharing that. So it's very interesting what you said. So how did you make the phones ring in the end? You know, you talked about the social media, the teaser campaigns. Obviously, um, your, I can't remember what was it, who, what's your partner called, sorry? My business partner? Yes. Uh, Paul. 
Paul, and sorry, your your good lady. Uh, my wife is Katie. Katie, there you go. Yeah. I've got Lucy, Katie. I didn't want to confuse everybody and get you and get you into trouble. <laughs> no, don't do that. <laughs> so, um, so look, your your mum's from schools. That's a great area of um, finding potential instructions. Can you talk us through how you know how would you do that? Because I I personally think that's a great way to help your local community. I do a lot of work with schools where I am, and they are so they're really suffering with um, all sorts of quick equipment, whether it's digital equipment, whether it's stationary, um, mm. whether it's sports equipment, whether it's books. So for me, um, linking up with a school um, is a great place to start um, mm. and work with them in the long term. So yeah. what, you know, what made you choose a school? Or it, it was just natural. Yeah, it was natural. And I've, and I've always wanted to change this opinion on state agents. Like ever since I started, I, there was this view on estate agents and I could see that when I was a child as well, growing up with it, that we were untrusted and, and out to get people and liars. And, and I've always prided myself on being hands on and, and approachable. And my personality is I wear my heart on my sleeve. That's never, ever going to change. That is me. And I wanted to change the mindset and, and, you know, go into schools and, and, you know, particularly with the amount of mums and then teachers I've met um, Lucy that was working with me, she um, she got involved in a colour rush event at um, Ogwell Primary School and, and we sponsored it. We put some banners up and me and the wife, um, Kate, uh, has done one recently with a sports day with um, Coombe Pafford School, which is children with learning difficulties. So we, we went down there and we were giving the kids all gold medals and, you know, talking to the kids and you know, giving them attention and cheering them on. And, and we all gave them little goodie bag, little tote bags with key rings and pens and stickers. And it's great. It was great. It was really, really humbling to do something like that, which I've never had the opportunity before to be able to do something like that. It's very much like you need to take 20 on, you need to take yourself 15, you need to exchange 30 grand, everything else we'll take care of. So it's it's been lovely because those ideas have always been there to sit there and go, well, now we're in control, we can implement these ideas. And, and if it works, great. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. You know, we've tried it. Um, so getting involved with, with local communities, we did a flower show last summer, which the wife was heavily involved in. Um, it's a, a, a local village where they're doing a flower show. And we did a drone video and sort of swept around inside and promoted it for them to give them awareness. And it was half a day out of my day to go and do that. And on the back of that, we've got connections with the local villages, which are always hard to kind of get into. Um, so that's been great. And then it's moved on to like local businesses, independent businesses that we support. So I have them in my valuation packs. Um, I also have them rotating on the front screen. I don't charge them anything for that. You know, their businesses are, are advertised within our company. Uh, and I don't expect anything back for that. If they recommend us, then great. But it all helps the process of moving home, whether that's vendor or buyer, and it's supporting your local plumber, your local chippy, um, department stores, uh, coffee shops, independent coffee shops, you know, 10% voucher within the vow packs. You know, all these little things help grow our business because when they publicize on social media, et cetera, they tag us in it. So. It's organically grown like that over the last near on three years, it'll be, which is great. That's absolutely, it's absolutely fantastic. And you shared some absolute gold there of what um, people should be doing. And um, a couple of things that I know a couple of agents are doing with schools, they're actually going in and they're doing tours of the schools. So schools can then use to either give to the parents that are deciding which school they should come to or actually for the kids who were like really nervous coming in for their first day thinking oh what's it going to be like where's the library where do we eat where's the playground what's our teachers going to be like so they already know that before they go in and i think that's brilliant i think yeah. you know i think luke sinclair's doing it and anton so in knightsbridge and um next place in tamworth i think it's fantastic so you know it's it's great you know, you talked about agents there uh, changing the opinion of estate agents. You know, it's, what, it's more, what more can people be doing by doing that? You know, it's yeah. exceptional. It, it's, you've got to get the buy-in from 
your customer. You know, you don't want to be unapproachable and just fall into that trap. And I think if anything, over the last three years, what we've all been through, it's, it's taught us so much to just take a step back and look at what's important rather than get caught up and in facts and figures and yeah of course facts and figures helps because that's what you know helps the business you know succeed but just take a step back and get involved in something local because the the end goal from what that can lead to is is huge for your business and and for you as a person it'll make you feel better definitely 100 percent. so who inspires steve green who inspires steve green <sighs> that's a tricky question really um i suppose a, a big part you know without saying man is dramatic you know dad is is a huge factor for this he's a huge factor um you know for finishing what he started to be quite honest is, is a big factor that drives me on um since i've started this business i've met so many different people where i now feel accepted you know the likes of linkedin has always been a place when i was employed that I felt I had to post because other people were saying you've got to post on there and build your network, etc. But but then having the passion for Simply Green and posting that on there, and then the people I've met like Amy, uh, Luke, and Ben at Hatton Home, Jason Ball, that you know we've become really good friends. He's a keen cyclist like I am, and going to the Esters last year and going to the EA Masters and actually feeling part of it and on a level was was a great feeling it really really was like my linkedin network has grown massively and has been a, a massive help to business so all of those people inspire me um ben uh, at hatton home i've watched their company with real keen interest because they started at a similar time to ourselves um i think their marketing is is the best i've ever seen in the state agency and you know me and him had a chat at the um uh, ea masters and i was like I'd love to jump in the car, jump on the train, come up and see you, have a coffee, have a look around your offices, you know, chew the cud. Um, because I, I think, you you know, your offices are very similar looking to what we've created in ours. Um, so, yeah, he, he inspires me massively, definitely. And, and certain people, you know, the likes of Jace Ball, um, father. Um, so, yeah. Great. I just want to touch on something you mentioned there, LinkedIn and growing your network. Why do you think why do you think that's so important and that if people are watching this how do they just get started and increase their network and you, you mentioned loads of fantastic agents there and you know the Esters and the EA masters that put on some fantastic events um how can you actually build up your local network um via linkedin it's it is continuously posting to a degree but posting interesting stuff that people want to read you know, um, there's a lot of, you know, look at me, look at me on LinkedIn, but, and that's fine. And, and I've done that, you know, we've done this, we've done that. Um, but be open and honest. And I think people will reach out to you, you know, me and Amy, I think we connected via that and, and Sprift and, and she's, she's been great. You know, she's a, an amazing human. That woman, I've said that she saw before. Um, but it's just, yeah, I think it's being open and honest on there, really. And people do reach out. I, I talked to the, the Baldock brothers as well. I, I met them since the company started and we, we met at the Esters. And they're very open and honest. And I like that about them, that they don't care. This is me. This is how I talk, you know, and this is what I'm going to say. And if you like it, fine. And I like that. But I think it's regularly posting and kind of, yeah, hashtags may, may help. I don't know. But, um, yeah. It's interesting the collaboration or fantastic now to see the collaboration between so many agents whereas before in my time as i like, oh, i would never talk to my competitors um i would really struggle it was us against them but that mentality has definitely changed I'm much sure. better yeah definitely i think it, it can be a lonely place you know yeah it certainly is a business owner it is a really i love reached out to people on linkedin um and you're right back in the day nobody nobody would have talked openly and said oh, you know i'm struggling or i've got this issue or whatever it might be um and still to a certain degree maybe in the local areas they're not going to reach out to those local agents but it's nice to have that network in other parts that you can go i'm in a better place i'm not quite sure what to do with this situation um 
and I've reached out to those people and they've come back straight away. They haven't left me for weeks on end. They've reached straight back, which has been, yeah, really, really nice. Brilliant. So any book recommendation, podcast recommendations? Are you a fan of those? Um, I'm not a massive book reader. I, I've got books. So I, I like thrillers and things like that, but I, I don't sit there religiously and, and read the, the books out there. I've listened to a couple of podcasts, um, Stephen Bartlett, you know, namely, um um but no i uh, i don't i don't all right i've just i've just booked my tickets to see him in march well, so, yeah going going with my son in fact my son booked one for me which is nice so, be good. it's great because he's eight no 19 now um and he started at location location and um, doing their social media content right. and does a and, and does a good job there um but what i love about him is he goes in every single day and he's taken my audible list um and he's reading all the, or listening to all the books going into work and he said dad i know you've got stephen bartlett on there he's coming out um in march do you want to go so i've nice. been taken by my son my 19 year old fantastic Joel brown's dad is being looked after thank you joel appreciate it so, <laughs> <laughs> which is great listen i'm really grateful for your time i well, wish you, you i wish you i wish you better um if people want to get hold of you steve how do they do that uh you can give me a call um on 07799 or you can reach out to my business email steve at simply green.co.uk brilliant well uh, really grateful for your, for your time thank you everybody for watching and um please like it share it do whatever you need to do. And I look forward to um, joining you all on the next Lunchtime Learnings. Thanks very much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.